today's video is sponsored by MSI. MSI wanted us to test out three different tiered systems and do some awesome builds for you guys. Today's build is the mainstream or mid-tiered system. This system will be aimed towards those gamers who would like to game at 1080p and 1440p. Today we'll be using the MSI RTX 2060 Super Gaming X graphics card, the MSI Z490 Tomahawk motherboard, the Intel i5 10600KF processor, and 32 gigs of RAM, all housed within the clean, compact MSI Secura 100p case. This case comes with four pre-installed ARGB fans, and a tempered glass side window. I'll leave all the specs in the description if you'd like to go check those out further. And of course, we will be running benchmarks for this system. I hope you all enjoy. And now a quick word from our friends over at Bob Keys. We're always building computers and we need to save money where possible. When it comes to Windows, we're able to save hundreds of dollars because of sites like our good friends over at bobkeys.com who are today's video sponsor. Bob Keys sell Microsoft Keys, Steam Keys, Origin Keys, Xbox and PSN Keys, probably even House Keys. If we jump over to Windows 10 Pro, you can see there's only 18 US dollars instead of over 100. Bob Keys want to hook out all Audience up with a 25% discount code, which now brings the total down to $13.56. This code will not last forever, so if you want to get rid of that watermark in the bottom right hand corner of your PC screen and utilize all of Windows features, then why not take advantage of this? After entering the coupon code IFR25, you can submit your order and pay. In the user center under purchased orders, you will find the stream key. Simply start typing activate in the Windows search bar and paste your new key to activate. It's that simple. Now guys, if you are interested, it is code IFR25 for 25% off, or you can use the links in the description to find out more information.
For today's testing, MSI sent over their MSI Optics MAG274R gaming monitor, which is a 127 inch, 144 hertz IPS panel with one millisecond response time. This is the perfect monitor to test our mainstream and budget system. And of course, it also has RGB bling. If you guys are interested in learning more about the monitor, I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can go check it out. Before we show the benchmarks, I wanted to show you some of the RGB features of the Core Liquid 240R and the fans within the case. The fans are all controlled with a built-in ARGB controller connected to the motherboard. If we go into the motherboard section, we have access to different parts of the motherboard or we can synchronize everything together. Over to the right, we have our LED style, which is usually set to rainbow by default. There are a number of LED styles to choose from. Personally, I like the breathing effect or just having the color set to steady. Now, of course, there are many more effects, but I'll let you guys go ahead, play around with the software and give it a try for yourself. All you have to do is download the Dragon Center app. Now let's move on to the benchmarks. As always, we allow the system to run for 30 minutes prior to testing to allow everything to heat up. Ambient temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. The CPU is idling at 25 degrees and the GPU at 34 degrees. Under full load, we saw the CPU max out at 61 to 67 degrees, which varies across all of the cores and the GPU around 68 degrees Celsius. Power draw for the CPU at full load was 98 watts, and for the GPU we saw around 178 watts. Our first test is Cinebench R15 where we stress multiple cores to render out an image. The CPU score was 1,445, which was an average of multiple runs. We loaded Cinebench R20 next to stress multi-core performance as well as single core. The 10600KF scored 3,607 points, putting it 1,334 points behind our 10700KF processor in our enthusiast PC last week. Single core performance was 504, which was only three points behind our 10700KF, making this a decent choice gaming CPU. You. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was our first game test. We loaded it up 1080p ultra settings and observed an average of 160 FPS. With ray tracing enabled, we saw a decrease in FPS to 123. 1440p saw an average of 110 FPS and turning ray tracing on dropped it to 84 FPS, still making this system a good 1440p gaming PC. Metro Last Light is our second game and ultra settings 1080p, we observed an average FPS of 313, while in 1440p we achieved 206 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has an in-game benchmark, as I said last week, 1080p ultra settings we scored 119 FPS and 1440p we scored 85 FPS. All game titles we tested were able to run at 1440p ultra settings. We had some very interesting results which makes me very curious to see how the budget system performs next week. Today's mainstream system came to a budget of 2,752 Australian dollars, which is around 2,000 US dollars. We did some testing of this CPU with the 2080 Super to see how raw performance affects gaming, and as well as to see if the price is justified. Our 10600KF came in roughly 5.5% slower than the 10700KF in gaming. The price of the 10600KF is 449 Australian dollars, making it roughly 33% percent cheaper than the 10700 KF. The 2060 Super came in roughly 25% slower than the 2080 Super, but at around 43% cheaper. The main takeaways here are both systems are quite capable of 1440p ultra gaming. However, we did see this mainstream system achieve only 85 FPS 1440p. As games become more and more demanding, we may have to lower some of the settings in this system for future releases. If you game at 1080p or 1440p, a mainstream system like this will save you a lot of money and can also last you quite a few years. Anyway guys, keep an eye out for next week's budget class system. It's gonna be an interesting one. And as always, I'll leave all specs in the description for all of the hardware that we used today. If you were interested, go check those out. And guys, remember to leave a like and tell us, do you like the format of this video with the benchmarks at the end of the bit of talking? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, check out more videos on the channel, lots of custom PCs, reviews, modding tutorials, and much more. And consider supporting us over on Patreon or become a YouTube member. Helps us out an absolute bunch. Thanks for the support, and we'll see you all in the next one.